Two and a half years ago, my niece Mabel was born, making me an aunt for the very first time, my husband and uncle for the very first time, and both of my kids cousins for the very first time. It was a really exciting time in our life and also a really hard one. May was born in the fall of 2020 at the peak of COVID, and therefore all of our relationships looked very different from how we would have expected becoming or coming into these roles for the first time. While we have formed really great relationships with May now that it's been a couple years and COVID isn't really what it was, back then we are around each other a lot more and it's been amazing. The first year of May's life was tough because it, it really felt disconnected. We weren't able to be a part of her life in the ways that we really wanted to. Thank goodness we can now. To help me feel more connected to my niece, one of the things I decided to do right from the get-go was to create a baby album for her. I decided that this would be a gift that I would give to my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my niece once it was completed. And this would be a way for me to stay connected to May through telling her stories of her growth and her relationships with those around her. It's now been two and a half years that I've been working on this album, which has expanded into three volumes, and I have finally finished it. Today, with permission, I am excited to share a flip through of all three volumes with you. I will take you through the different layouts that I created. We'll talk about the format and the journaling and all of that kind of stuff. I can't wait to share all of this with you. I hope you're excited too. Now, before we get into the flip through, I'm gonna hold up the albums here. So all three albums were created in a three by eight album. So they are narrow or skinny and tall. With the three by eight albums, the spine width is only an inch and a half wide, which meant that I was either for sure going to need two albums or potentially three. By the end of documenting this, the full 12 months fit into a total of three of these albums. And they actually fit in there quite nicely. For the stories themselves, I wanted to have a lot of different voices inside of May's albums. These are books that I hope that someday she'll look back on and see what was it like being a baby at this time? What was it like being a parent to an infant during COVID? What was her relationship like with her grandparents and her cousins and her aunts and her uncles? I want her to go back and view these albums through all of our eyes. And because of that, I have journaling from a variety of sources. The majority of it comes from my sister-in-law and also my brother-in-law. Every month I would send them one or two prompts, journaling prompts to respond to, send back to me and to include photos that they felt might go nicely with that story. I would then take their journaling and the photos that they sent and create a layout to feature both the words and the photos. Sometimes I would send the prompts to May's grandparents. Sometimes I would have journaling from her aunts and uncles. Um, I just, I tried to have as much variety in the voices inside of these books as possible so that she can see from everyone's perspective what her upbringing was like that first year, what it was like to have her in our lives and the impact that she had on each of us. As for the flow of these albums, for the most part, every month is going to be relatively the same. There will be a feature photo where May is laying on a blanket, the same blanket every single month, so you can see her growth as the months go by. And then there is a page for stats and then two larger stories from the month. All right, friends, let's get over to my tabletop view and flip through the three volumes of May's baby album. I start out volume one with an introductory couple of pages talking about May's birth. So this would have been her newborn month before we jump into month number one. On the 
front page here, I do have a transparency that says Stay Magical. This was an older transparency set that was sold on the Allie Edwards Design Inc. website, which is also where all of these green linen 3x8 albums came from. They were older from a December daily release, I want to say in 2020 is when these ones were sold. So I've got the Stay Magical here, followed by one of May's newborn pictures. Then on the back of this, I have stamped her birthday, so 9320, and then have some of her introductory stats along with a picture of her from the hospital. So this includes things like her weight, her height, her date of birth, all of those types of things. Next, I have a couple of additional photos from the day that she was born. This is one of my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and May in the hospital. And then I have one here that's my brother-in-law with my mother-in-law and my father-in-law. Now, the story behind May's birth is that uh, when we received the text message that she was coming, we all drove separately, each of our families, to the hospital and sat in the parking lot until she was born. The hospitals at the time were not allowing guests to come in, so it was only my sister-in-law and brother-in-law in the room when, um, when my sister-in-law, Caitlin, was giving birth. So I talk in this journaling card right here about tailgating in the hospital parking lot, waiting for her arrival, and how different that was compared to when I had my kids COVID wasn't a thing at the time, and the hospital was busting full of our family who all came to see Izzy when she was born and Jonah when he was born. So it's just something that was really, really different, and I wanted to tell that story for May. So this was about uh, her the day that she came. There's journaling on the front and on the back here. And then I've got a picture of my husband and his brother. They are twins. Um, so they have a very, very special relationship. And I thought that this was so great to have a picture of them as now they are both dads uh, as of this moment right here and to include that in May's album as well. The next story here is about going home. This is always a big story when a new baby is born, is leaving the hospital for the first time, driving for the first time with the new baby in your car, and taking them home uh, with the realization that this is all officially now on you. <laughs> like This is it, right? So the journaling here is from my sister-in-law talking about bringing May home. I have an acrylic piece here that says Pure Joy. That's an older color cast design piece. And then I just use stuff from my stash to journal on the cards and create some filler. When I get to the end of the months, in this case, we're in the newborn section, but all of the the future months will end the exact same. I picked out a piece of pattern paper and I put that on the back side. So just a very simple way to close out each of the months. Then we get into the official first month. For these, I am using more of those plastic dividers. These were again from the Allie Edwards Design Inc website. I believe they were from an older album that was maybe called My Story. It was meant for really any storytelling, but primarily targeted at teenagers documenting. So kind of a first, a first step into scrapbooking as a teenager. I loved the dividers and there just happened to be 12 of them, which was perfect since I knew I wanted to have 12 sections, one for each month of May's first year. I then added on this plastic number. This was from an older week in the life number set and then finished this off with some tiny free stickers and a little chipboard star. So that designates that we are at one month. This is where you'll start to see the pictures on the blanket here. May, uh, her full name is Mabel. She has a Totoro bedroom or nursery. So the blanket that my sister-in-law used to gauge how much she had grown was this Totoro blanket. And it's, it is crazy to see the difference between when she was one month old and then when she's 12 months old at the end. 
Next, I created this layout, and this is one that you're going to see repeated again and again as well. Over here, I've got one month that I stamped out, and then I typed in all of the stats for the month. I'll read through what all of these different pieces are all the different little stats that I had my sister-in-law keep track of in case this is something that you are thinking about doing for your own baby or a baby that's coming into your family or your friends group. So I have clothing size, diaper size, sleep performance, and that was a number out of I think 10 maybe or one out of four. So maybe it was out of four. Appetite, three words. So this would have been three words to describe Mabel, her first month of her life. Sounds learned, new tricks learned, memorable moments. When this month ended, we felt my baby, something significant to add. So that was just up to her, whatever she wanted to add. Now, right here, the three words that they used to describe her that month are then what I used to stamp out the words here on this pattern paper to the side. So the words for one month were beautiful, sweet, and hangry. So you can see beautiful, sweet, hangry, beautiful, sweet, hangry, just repeated. Then I've got the first of the two stories from this month. This first one is about um, oh gosh, this one, I'm trying to remember, what did I say? So maybe I asked her to talk about something that, um, something that was maybe hard that then they were seeing the bright side of, right? Kind of taking this card that says there are always flowers for those who want to see them. So looking for the positivity or looking for the good in some of the hard. The first month, really the first couple of months with a newborn are exceptionally difficult, especially if it is your first child because it is your first experience ever in doing all of the baby stuff. So for this one, I have the full page photo here. This was using the Bloom Story Kit from Allie Edwards, which oftentimes helped me gauge what stories or what prompts that I wanted to send to my sister-in-law. So I've got this moment down here on some pattern paper. I love seeing the socks that say mama. This would have been from the hospital with my brother-in-law holding Mabel. And then my sister-in-law had quite a bit of journaling. So I created this flip up. The top part here is a journaling card that says the story and then underneath it, it just continues. So, you know, I, I, I'm always up to the challenge of finding ways to add more words into smaller layouts if I can. The next story was using the progress story kit from Allie Edwards. This one, I asked my sister-in-law to tell me a story about uh, something that she felt she was progressing with or, you know, something that you could see the progression over the last month. For this one, she decided to tell her breastfeeding story and how it was really difficult until they figured it out or figured out a system that worked for them between Caitlin and Mabel. And, um, I feel like this is such an important story to tell and one that I hope that Mabel will go back and read when she's older um, because I think it's it's such it's such a glimpse into what it's like to become a parent whether that's for the first time or for you know the sixth time every single time we're just trying to do our best right and um and sometimes that doesn't feel like enough. And so I think that this story of talking about struggle and then pushing through is, is important. It's resilience, right? It's, it's being persistent and, keep in, and continuing to keep trying and also at the same time having backup plans for when things don't go according to plan. Anyway, so for this one, again, it's a longer story. So there's a flip out here where my... I've added in Caitlin's journaling. I also have some additional journaling here in this learn to trust the process and in some of these little tags just for a, a fun way to add in a bit more story aside from what was just included in this longer form journaling. But I feel like in my opinion, this is one of the most important stories in this entire album.
And I'm so proud of my sister-in-law, Caitlin, for writing it and being willing to share it. And then we have our pattern paper that closes out month number one, and we jump into month number two. So see, same format here. We've got the picture where she's getting a little bit bigger. Then we've got the um, stats on this side here. I decided to pair this with some family photos that we took this month together. So cute, such a cute little family. Uh, for the first of the larger stories, I asked for 20 things that my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna call them Caitlin and Alex from now on, it's easier to say. So 20 things that Alex and Caitlin were thankful for in this month. So I've added the list of 20 things. Here's the picture of their little family. Um, the whole concept came from this little die cut that says 2020 the best. I just thought that that made sense. Then the second prompt that I asked them for this month was a song of significance. So a lullaby or a song that they were listening to, one that they maybe sang to her that uh, had significance for them and their family. So the story I got back was an Elvis Presley song that's Can't Help Falling in Love. This is a story that Alex, uh, a story of a song that Alex would sing to May and she, she just loved it when he sang it to her. So I've got the picture of May and then I have the lyrics to Can't Help Falling in Love. And then we close out month two with some pattern paper. For month number three, we've got a little bit more personality here. She's getting bigger. I've got the stats on this side yet again. On the right side, I have a layout. This is actually one I made recently, um, talking about May's name. So where her name Mabel and her nickname May came from. I used the whole story kit from Allie Edwards for this one, created this little flip out that's got the story on the back side and then the picture of her in her bed. So cute. And then the next story here was using the strong story kit. This one, I think I had just asked for a story of strength and I just left that up to Caitlin to decide what that was going to be. And she talked about how May had an issue with her hip and had to go see an orthopedic surgeon about it, wore cast for a while. They were worried about hip dysplasia. Um, Turns out everything, you know, everything turned out just fine, but telling the story of making it through all of that stress and fear and everything that comes with it. This little picture of her pouty face is so darn cute. <laughs> Baby pouty faces are the cutest. And then we've got the pattern paper to finish out month three. Moving on to month number four. This one has the cat included in the picture too, which is awesome. We've got the stats and then that full page of stamping. The first story here was five I love you because statements. So I had asked Caitlin to tell me five things that she loved. Actually, there's only four. Four things that she loved about Mabel at this age. For this one, I used the, I think this was the kindness story stamp. I'm pretty sure, not story stamp, story kit. From Allie Edwards. I'm pretty sure it was kindness. Love this picture of the two of them. I think that's really cute. I feel like she took that one as a selfie maybe or a self-portrait with her DSLR camera, but super love that. And then the second story here is around here. So I told her to write out five around, around here's five things that May loves doing, five things that she is interested in, you know, any five things. And I wrote out the journaling here. This one was using the cozy story kit from Allie Edwards. I've got the quote, I've got the journaling card. This was using the stamp and I loved this, you know, we are defined by the moments we seize. This opens up and then there's the larger photo of May, one of my favorite photos of her from this whole year, the whole first year. Um, I just, it really highlights the blue of her eyes. It's such a pretty picture. And then we've got the pattern paper to close out month number four. And that concludes volume one. Let me grab volume two. So we're jumping into volume two here, starting out with the number five divider. Here is that picture on the blanket. The stats with the three words. This time it's smiley, grabby, and attentive. 
And then we have, I feel like this month we have a couple of bonus stories. We sure do. I think I just had more I wanted to tell and figured why not. So for this one, I've got this tag that pulls out and I believe this is journaling from me. Yes. So sometimes, like I said, there is journaling that comes from me and you're also going to see some journaling that comes from other people, I believe in this, in this volume as well. So I wrote a little letter to Mabel from when, at the time when she was five months old, it just tucks into this little corner pocket and included, I included this photo of her, which I think is just so cute. I love these. She was the cutest little baby. She really, really was. She's still the cutest little kid, but oh my gosh, babies. They're so adorable. This one right here is using the Bloom Story Kit yet again with some other add-ons. That or it might have been a March Stories by the Month kit. It might have also been that. I wanted to tell a story about um, something new that May has discovered. So this concept of, you know, like blooming and... Um, you know, something that she was loving that was new. And the story of this one was eating her toes or sucking on her toes. So I had a couple of pictures to work with. I decided to just go ahead and make it into a photo strip so we could see all of those different photos and then added the journaling into this card up here with a bunch of embellishments to finish that off. And then this would have been February, so Valentine's time. And my sister-in-law did a photo shoot with May in this cute little apron for Valentine's Day. So I wanted to have the larger photo in here. I've got this Love, 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 which is an older color cast design uh, acrylic piece. And then I wanted 10 details. So again, asking for I love or we love statements. And this time I get we love. We love when, we love your big smile, we love your wondrous eyes. Um, 10 things that they were loving about her right now. They being Alex and Caitlin. This next one is a story about my husband and Mabel. So this would have been, you know, a story from her uncle. This, I actually have some handwritten journaling from my husband. Um, that is a little letter to her from this age. And then uh, the page here itself is fairly intricate. I wanted to um, use a Paige Evans cut file. I'm gonna try to get this in here without getting my head in the way. There we go. I wanted to use a Paige Evans Paige Evans cut file, which included all of these florals. I backed them with vellum because I thought that made a really pretty and soft appearance for the layout itself. And then I hand stitched on top of, or underneath, I should say, all of these flowers, some leaves. So I've got the different colored leaves, the flowers go on top, and then I've got the photos of them as the centers of the flowers. And I think it is just gorgeous. This is definitely a favorite layout and so tedious. It was extremely tedious, but I'm very, I'm very in love with it and glad, glad it's in here. And then we finish off with the pattern paper. Then we're jumping into month number six. So we've got our photo on the blanket. This one, I wanted to tell stories about how Mabel was playing. So I asked, you know, what are things that she loves to play with? How does she play? Those types of things. I've got this loving with the rainbow here and love the way you play. And then the journaling about it and a couple of pictures that helps to depict what her play looked like at the time. Then I've got a story about their morning routine. So I asked Caitlin to send me a little bit of journaling about what the mornings look like for them at this time. I've got uh, an average morning, so 10 things that are that happen on average every morning at this time with May. And then over here, this little piece flips up and then there's longer journaling underneath from Caitlin. And then I believe that is it. So then we end with the pattern paper for month number six and begin month number seven. Photo on the blanket. This is a story about my father-in-law, so my husband's dad, and his relationship with May. Alex, my brother-in-law, has some journaling. I wanted 
Alex specifically to journal about his dad and his daughter. So he's going to be adding that journaling in here because he just didn't get it to me on time, but he does have it written out. So when they get this, he can pull this card out and just handwrite on there, which I actually think is not a bad thing anyway to include handwriting in these layouts. I think that will be really special to have a handwritten piece of journaling from her dad. And then this time we're talking about evening routines. So we did morning routines on month number six. Month number seven, we've got evening routines. So I've got the picture of the three of them reading books. There's this little divider in between. And then this talks about what their quiet evenings looked like which I'm sure will be interesting to read now that she's quite a bit older and evenings aren't so quiet anymore. <laughs> and then we end with the pattern paper and move on to month number eight. Picture on the blanket. Here is the three words and then all of the stats. The three words this time are adorable, silly, and fun. And then this was another layout that I just recently did. Oh, and look at that, I did not connect them. I need to connect them before I hand this over. This one was using a Studio Calico kit, the Lots of Love kit from Studio Calico. This story is about the relationship between May and her grandfather on her other side. So my sister-in-law, Caitlin's dad. Uh, Caitlin is the one who included the journaling here and um, that's pretty much it. So stamping, I fussy cut this from a journaling card, love having the big titles and pairing it with the larger photos. This I need to adhere so that they are <laughs> stuck together. Behind this, I have a story of four little details about right now. This is a picture from the park and then talking, you know, or journaling about the different things that they were doing or that uh, weighs little details about Mabel from this age at eight months old and we end with the pattern paper okay so that is month number five through eight we have one more album one more volume to go through i'll grab that one right now month number nine starting again with the divider and then that picture on the blanket and then we have this super cute layout. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Talking about fun in the sun. So playing outside. At this time, things were vastly improving in terms of COVID. So we were spending a lot more time together. And uh, this was a picture that I took, I believe, when we went over to their house to hang out with the kids one of the days. So first time in her pool, having all kinds of fun. So cute. This one was another layout that I recently made with the Studio Calico Lots of Love kit. And the story here was the first time that Caitlin took May out of the house completely by herself. So not having, not having her mom or me or Alex or anybody with her. It was just her and May and telling that story. And then that would be month number nine, jumping into month 10. And we have the picture on the blanket. We have stats this time around. Um, this is just a fun picture from getting some ice cream. Here we went to a splash pad and told that story. I love this picture. It's so cute. And the picture on a picture is definitely a uh, concept I super love. Got this idea from Kin uh, Chafin, who is Kim Documents Life on Instagram. She is a huge inspiration for that type of layout. And then uh, this month, I believe we have extras, maybe. I think there's extras. Nope, there's not. Um, this one is I Love You Statements from Mabel's grandmother. So this was journaling from her grandma and as I said, you know, trying to get some more voices into the album. So cute. Paige Evans cut files that I shrunk down and backed and added in here. Love all that dimension. It does add a lot of dimension. It does bulk things up, but man, it is really pretty. And then the pattern paper to finish that off. Month number 11, we have the picture on the blanket. This is another layout created with the Studio Calico Lots of Love collection. 
um, for little moments. And this is specifically talking about May taking her first steps or walking for the first time. There is a QR code here that leads to a video, a private video, that is May actually walking. So a, a little video clip of her first steps and then the journaling about it as well. Then we've got uh, just a couple of words that describe Mabel. So toothless and smiles and wobbles and onesies and slobber kisses and cuddles. So just using or toothless smiles is was the whole thing, not toothless. Toothless smiles, wobbles, onesies, slobber kisses, cuddles. This is just a fun way to include a little bit of context, a little bit of about somebody without having to do in-depth journaling, just using words to describe them. And then we end there. And finally, we have month number 12. So this one, you can see there is not the blanket, right? So all of the other ones have the blanket. This one would have been her first birthday party. Um, where this picture was taken. It's one of my favorites and I felt like it deserved to be the main feature photo. Then we've got a story about the first time that Mabel went on an airplane. Um, this one has a little hidden journaling here or a hidden picture with my sister-in-law and um, our second niece who came in 2021. So we've got that tucked into the photo here, some additional journaling up at the top, and that is that. The second story is all about Mabel's birthday party. So I've got tons of pictures from her birthday party. This pulls out and has some journaling from Caitlin and Alex on it. It's like a little, a little card or a little letter to her at the end of her first year. And then we end with the pattern paper. Inside of this one, I also included a little end card. And this is from me. It's just a letter to Mabel that I wrote um, now that this album is done and explaining, you know, what this album really meant to me to be able to be the one to create it for her. I finish it out with a picture of the two of us, so Mabel and myself. And then I have also included this pocket where... Um, I've instructed my sister-in-law, Caitlin, if there's anything else that she wants to include, any other letters, any other documents, anything that she can slip into the pocket here, um, that is available for her. And then this pocket is one of those like twist pockets, right? It opens up and it closes. I thought this could be good for any little ephemera pieces they might want to put in here. So maybe the the original name card from the hospital or the bracelet, they could put those things in here and then everything could be kept together. But that is volume number three. So we have all three volumes done, lots of stories told. I am so excited to give these to Caitlin. I'm seeing her later this week and we'll officially do the handoff. Um, I just, I'm super, super happy with how these turned out. It works out really nicely because I have my, my next niece, and this time the first niece on my side of the family that is due in April. So one month from now, I will have another niece to love on, uh, the first child of my younger sister. And I am so excited and I've already committed to documenting her first year of life. Um, so, and again, it's it's one of those opportunities for me to be able to connect to my niece in, in a time where it's a little bit harder to be together. They live a little further from us, so we won't be able to be there every second of every day. But in telling the stories like this, it helps me to feel connected and to feel like I am a part of their story by simply telling their story. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed seeing the flip through of the three different albums. I'm gonna pull, let me pull them back all over here so we can open them all up, at least to the very front, uh, as a little send off here. Look at that. Oh my goodness, can we see them all in here? We sure can. Oh man, stories told, life lived. Life is good, right? Life is good. Friends, I will be back soon with another video. Well, next Friday, I'll be back with another video. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed this flip through. If you did, I would love a thumbs up on this video down below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you can catch all of my future videos. I will see you back here on Friday. Until then, have a great week, a great weekend, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, friends.